Here are my strawberry baskets my husband made me. They're so cool. I'm so excited. Just got them planted and watered, set for the night. Just thought I'd kind of show you around my new garden that I put up. It's all cinder block, except the, um, the metal that my husband made for me to keep them all kind of from shifting. Really like that idea. It was his idea, of course. There's watermelons, icebox. They're all gonna go up the trellis, so um, I have a lot more garden room. Yeah, that's watermelons, watermelons. Here's some peppers. We got jalapenos, anchos, um, New Mexico, poblanos. And we got some gourds, all those different variations of gourds that are so pretty in the fall. Um, then we got asparagus beans. If you've never seen asparagus beans, um, just keep watching and I'll refilm it again when they're up the trellis and hanging down. They're really long, like 12 inches long, and they're asparagus colored. They're supposedly very delicious, but I've never had them before, so we'll see. Um, more poblanos. I'm going to um, make chili powder this year, so I needed to get a lot of poblanos. Um, and I'm going to make ancho chili powder. And that's going to be the white cucumber. And then the muncher cucumbers, which is a little tiny one. Well, not tiny. They're about eight inches long. Then we got an eggplant right there. And down here off the box, we have Ellie's pumpkins. She always wants jack-o'-lanterns. And then we have little white pumpkins. Or no, tiny, tiny Tim's whatever those are called. And then we did have right there a sunflower and it bit the big one, so it's gone. Then we got all sorts of tomatoes. Um, let's see, we got, uh, these are Bonnie's original. We got the Goliath and a couple of these got froze, but they're actually coming back, which I can't even believe, but Roma's, mm, Cherokee, and I replaced the Cherokees because they were just really got frostbitten. They were the worst. And then another Cherokee purple. Mm -hmm. Mr. Stripey. That's kind of an orange and red mixed stripes. Tiger stripe. And then another Roma. An early girl. A uh, red beefsteak. I have no idea what this one is. It's huge though. This is a um, yellow. No. <laughs> I don't know. Here's the tag. This one is a beefsteak. Red beefsteak. This is the yellow um, lemon boy. Lemon boy. And then over here, let's see, that's all on that box. And then this box we have... Um, muskmelon, Eden's Gem, those are heirloom. Um, coming up here is Honey Rock, Honey Rock Melon. Say that. Can't say that word. Honey Rock Melon. Then, let's see, more tomatoes. This one is a black and brown boar. And I got those here at where San Juan, um, or the LaSalle Garden used to be tomato let's see this is a chocolate cherry this one is a paul robeson a purple heart and they're all kind of curled up because they've had a lot of wind lately and they're just trying to protect themselves there's a juliet this is a white beauty and this one was caught um my sister christy got it for me as a surprise so I can't wait to see what that's going to be like. And then this other is another variegated or striped one. And this is a green zebra. And she got me that one too. So I'm pretty excited to see what those look like. There's another Juliet. And then over here we've got straight neck yellow squash. And they've already started going like crazy. And since this is a new garden with, with basically just a hodgepodge of 
dirt from our land, from Jared's land, and from the city compost. I put that uh, the mulch and compost and mixed it in. Um, we didn't know what we were going to get, so we were kind of worried about it. But boy, they're really liking this. This is zucchini squash. Okay, and on this side, these are all beef, beef vertical on these trellises. This is a blue hubbard. This is an heirloom. Looks like an acorn squash, but it's kind of a silvery color on the outside, or a bluish color. That's the name. This one's a spaghetti squash. It's also heirloom variety. Then we've got um, poblanos. Uh, culapino. That means it's a jalapeno that doesn't get hot. Um, this one is New Mexico. And those are poblanos back there. There's an ancho, and it's doing really good. I just topped all of them, so. Then coming up here, right here, um, that is a loofah. And if you've never, it doesn't look like it's doing very good, but um, if you've never seen a loofah before, it looks like a cucumber, and then you peel it and let it dry in the sun, and it makes those little loofah sponges. So I've never done that. I'm planning to do it. This one hasn't come up yet. I planted it late. It's a petite yellow watermelon. And then we have heirloom cantaloupes right here. And they're just doing really well. Um, these are chili, New Mexico chili peppers. There's another jalapeno. Um, poblano. This one is called... Um, I haven't ever done this, but it's really, there's cute peppers, candy cane pepper, and they're kind of variegated in color. I can't wait to see what they look like. That'll be cool if they come up. Poblanos, um, and actually that plant is one of my healthiest, and I did top that one, and it's a little putting out a bunch of shoots. So then cayenne, so I'm gonna make some cayenne pepper too, um, and some hot sauce, bottled hot sauce with that. So. Um, let's see, what else did I plant? Let me bring you over here to this part of the garden. I'm losing sunlight. Um, this right here, this row says one potato, two potato, three potato, four. And there's four kinds of potatoes. So we got purple, gold, red, and russet in these two lines. Um, down here we've got the gigantic um, jumbo pumpkins, jack-o'-lantern, whatever, jumbos. Um, and I didn't expect all of those to come up because they were really, really slow. So I replanted and now I got double. So we'll have to thin those probably. Because um, then I had already also planted another jack-o'-lantern pumpkin right here. And he's doing really good. He's super happy. That's a weed. I don't like those weeds. Okay. So this, on this garden, I'm trying something new this year. And all I did was I just very lightly lifted the dirt. Then I laid cardboard down on top of the dirt, but I didn't turn it. It was a no-turn garden, no-till garden. Um, and then I took um, cardboard and wet it down and laid it down over the whole garden, over the, over the ground. And then um, I placed dirt on top, garden soil on top of the um cardboard and i should have probably put an extra maybe three or four more inches than i did because as i watered a, a lot of it washed sideways i can't believe even these are two one of them's the heirloom corn and one of them's just a non-gmo they look a little yellowish i'm not really sure what's going on with that if anybody knows let me know um this was supposed to be a row of um burgundy heirloom okra and I think it kind of was too shallow for it, so I'll have to replant this and I'll do that again too. It's not quite warm enough for okra anyways. Um, this is beets, beat it. Another little rock, can't see it. Beat it. And so those are beets. And then we've got um, four rows of onions that are yellow, red, and no, just two rows of yellow and two rows of red. Um, that row is a row of, um, that'll be multicolored bells if, it, if they come up. They are another one that kind of washed away, so we'll see. 
um, kale. Kale's coming up and it's looking pretty hardy so far. And then we got the multicolored Swiss chard, the red, orange, and yellow Swiss chard or purple. Anyways, it's all different colors. And it's much healthier to eat um, a rainbow of colors. This was a voluntary something or other, I don't know, cucumber maybe. Um, and then we've got spinach growing in this two aisles. You can kind of see it there. And um, then over here we've got iceberg lettuce, iceberg ahead. That one says eat your spinach. That one says iceberg ahead. That one says let us give thanks. That one's lettuce as well. That's more of the fancy variety. And then we've got Captain Buttercrunch. So Buttercrunch lettuce and it's going crazy. Then we got right here, we've got red or purple cabbage, whichever you call it. Those were the Cherokee purple tomatoes that I replaced from the ones. So I put them in here because I had already, I kind of kept those there because I thought, well, if they don't die, then maybe I'll get a few tomatoes off of them. Who knows? I just don't, I have a hard time ripping plants up. So that's what happened. And then these are, I have no idea what color potatoes these are, but we'll find out when we dig them up in the fall, I guess, right? Um, that's it in the ground garden. And then if I come over here to these boxes, my husband also made me, these have been here for about four years. Um, We've had, I the, I did cool season, a lot of the cool season stuff early. This was one of them. This is peas. And they are already getting ready to put off some flowers and some fruit. Easy peasy. Um, and then on this side will be beans. They didn't come up. Um, only three of them came up. And so I just replanted those as well. And it could be just because I planted it really early and it was too cold of ground. So I might get double, but it's, it's okay. And then um, right here is cilantro. And what's really funny is I have tried every year, there we go, cilantro, to plant cilantro. And nope, wasn't going to do it. So I have not gotten cilantro ever before this time. I planted it every year. And then basil cousin basil I got cousin basil right there near little but man if you touch them you smell like basil all day long and they're so cool I love basil and then this is uh carrots 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 these are the multicolored carrots and they got red orange white and yellow or purple purple, orange, white, yellow. And then this is another voluntary friend. I might transplant him because he can't grow where the carrots are. And then there's another bean. And I think this right here might be a dill coming up, but it could be a weed. So I'm letting it grow for a little bit and see. Cause, okay, on this side, we've got some of the delicate purple lettuce gourmet we got beans on this side too, and they didn't come up either, so I replanted those. They don't take very long to um, produce, and they produce a lot, so I really wanted beans this year. Some years, they're just not good years for beans. Um, this is parsley, and there's some coming up right there. See all the little parsleys? Hi, parsley. That's another one that doesn't really, that's a weed. Weed, weed. Um, doesn't come in up very good. And then this one is thyme. So there's all those little thymes and they are happy little thymes. So they'll probably do okay. And then I had a voluntary spinach that came up right there. And the fork is because the cat insists on using this as his litter box. And so, yeah, didn't want him to dig up the spinach and pee on my spinach plant. So. And then those are watermelon radishes. They're so cute. They're white, white on the outside and then they're red on the inside like a watermelon. They're so cute. And anyways, um, and this, I don't have any clue how this got here. This little bunch of what appears to be potatoes. I did not plant potatoes in here. I don't know if a, a squirrel or something got a potato and 
buried it for <laughs> saving for later, but look at how many potatoes. I, I think they're potatoes. They look just like the potatoes and they're really stiff and, and firm, you know, so I'm guessing those are potatoes. I'm getting eaten alive, eaten alive, eaten alive. Okay, and then I think that's it in that bucket or in that garden. There's my plum tree. Okay, over here I planted some lavender and it loves it here. It is just going crazy. It's doubled already in a week. And then I've got chives over here. This was supposed to be mint and then I changed my mind and it wasn't growing anyway, so that was okay because I was thinking, you know what, mint's gonna just spread all over the yard if I don't put it in a container. So I'm thankful that it didn't grow, I think. God is good. So in this, I just got this. Um, this is a cherry tree, a self-pollinating cherry tree. Hi, kitty. That's not my cat. I don't know whose it is, but it's running away. Um, and then down here, we have chocolate mint. And it, I don't know how they do these things, but it smells exactly like chocolate mint. And it's already putting off shoots to, to uh, start spreading. So I hope I'm not sorry for putting that there either. But anyway, okay, over into this garden. This is Alina's garden. She started this. And so I've been adding to it yearly. Um, there's my mulberry bush and it's getting very big. Then I just planted in this little, um, I don't know what you call a stump, um, some chamomile, because I wanted to try chamomile, and I really love chamomile tea. Ah, mosquito. And these flowers, there's kind of a cool story about this. When Mike and I, our first house that we rented um, when we were newly married, about a year into our marriage, had these irises. And they were getting really, really, there's a, did you see that? I think it's a moth. Um, but they were getting really, really crowded. And so we split these and gave some to my mom. Um, my mom and dad just passed away in January. And um, a little while ago, like two years ago, she asked me if I would come and help her split these again. And because they were just getting crazy. And so I said, yes, I would love to take some. And she said, well, yeah, let's do it. So I split them again and brought them to this house. So these are actual flowers from 35 years ago when Mike and I were first newlyweds in our first home. Now they're at this home and they've been at my mom's home. So anyways, not that anybody cares about that, but I care. Okay, and then these are lilies that Alina planted. I can't remember what that's called, but it's one of those. And I accidentally hacked it with the, when I was pulling weeds, I didn't realize it was there. So now it's only that big. It wasn't quite that big, but there's the lilies. Um, there's more chives. And I'm not sure if anybody knows what this bush is. It's coming up in a couple places and it's beautiful. I've never seen a flower come off of it, but I don't know what it is. And then I got this one. This one smells like licorice. It's really cool. And then I had some mums and they passed away. I don't know what happened to them, but one, one, one mum is still there. And I'll replant again. This is the third time they don't like it here. And then this one is a dwarf nectarine. And I just got it from San Juan Gardens for 35 bucks. It was last year's. And um, it's going crazy. And it, it's not gonna have any peaches or nectarines on it this year, but it really likes it here. So um, yeah, there you go. There's that, that's that garden. It's really cute. It's got a little um, windmill, but well, the windmill's not on it anymore. It flew the coop in our, in our wind. <laughs> okay, and then let's see. Um, this one is starting to look a little bit scraggity. It's got weeds. So I'll weed it in just a little while. And it's got daisies. And then these mums, they don't look like nothing now. But man, when they come up, they are beautiful. And they're burnt orange, like dark orange. And in the fall, they're gorgeous. So there's that. 
that's all of those and then this is a pompous grass pampas grass and then that's one of those purple spear flowers can you don't you like all my scientific <laughs> names for all of my plants if i thought about it a while i could probably remember <laughs> what they're called but i can't think of it right now there's the house it looks like it's on fire it's not <laughs> okay so anyways there's my garden tour I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have been enjoying it. Um, um, if you want to see more of these, um, then just let me know. I'll I'll keep it going throughout the summer and you can see how it progresses and it might be fun to see. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bless you. Bye.